Hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys to another episode of Terra Firma Punk. Oh man. Yeah, you know, I've been addicted to that game, and the bad news is, it's been a couple weeks again. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is the trouble of addiction, right? Uh-huh. The good news is, though, I am no longer addicted to the game. I actually quit playing it, finally. Finally, I can live again and do some other stuff. Whew. Now, a lot of you, you were upset. You were like, Etho, you can't just mention you're playing another game and not tell us the name of it, right? That's the very least you could do. And I kind of kind of didn't want to tell you the name of it on purpose because it's like a guilty pleasure game of mine. And you might be like, okay, Etho, that is fine. You know, you, you do you. You play whatever you want. We won't judge you for it. But what if... I told you I was playing Barbie's Magical Pony Dress-Up Simulator. You would judge me. You definitely would. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was Maple Story 2. Uh -huh. um, a little bit of backstory on that. Um, by the way, I did this wrong. We were supposed to actually turn... Oh, unseal. We we're supposed to turn this into lime water, not just water, to make the, the leather. I don't know how much you need to add, though. Oh! Oh, it switched. Okay. Medium soaked tide. Okay, that's going to work. That's definitely going to work. Uh, yeah, a little bit of backstory on that. Um, I was actually one of the very first people to play the original Maple Story. Like, the day it came out, I played the beta. Like, that was some 10 years ago. And I played it for about two or three years in turn until it turned into like a pay to win thing when the thing officially got released and lots of people started playing it and then they they turned it into pay to win basically but it's always been like a very nostalgic game to me so when maple story 2 came out i had to check it out you know because i had i had fond memories of the game in the past Oh yeah, by the way, I think we have a goal here for today, because I just spent another, like, 10 minutes AFK on this platform. But I can't AFK, I gotta make sure I don't die, so I just, like, sat here and did nothing. Uh, we gotta get a bed today so we can start skipping these knights, because they are brutal. So we can either use string, jute, or we gotta get silk. Oh, that's, or no, wool. Yeah, we have three options here. So we can go wool yarn as well. We get that from sheep. Um, and I just checked the wiki page. Apparently, you don't need shears to shear the sheep. You can use a knife as well. So let's go check out those sheep by the hill there. Let's see if we can steal their coats. Oh, and I got some torches to relight. Uh huh. But yeah, in, re in regards to the Maple Story 2 thing, I actually really enjoyed playing the game for a few weeks. Had a lot of fun with it. I never really played. Or I never did play World of Warcraft, so I never experienced like raids and and that kind of thing. And Maple Story 2 had had those in them. There's like four man and ten man raids, which were really fun. Um, the first few times you do them, <laughs> the game set up where everything's really fun the first few times, and then it expects you to keep doing them, and then it becomes a real chore. Like every week they want you to clear sixty four man raids, and it's like it was really hard the first few times, but then it's just like no challenge to it after that, right? So it's boring. It's really boring. Um, so that's kind of why I ended up quitting the game. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with the, the rating aspect of it the first few times anyway. Okay, let's get to this. So apparently this will work. Aha, look at that. This animal won't let you do that, really. What about you? Yeah, you're friendly. Familiarized. Oh, this has the familiarized check mark. This one doesn't. So I guess you do actually need to tame them then. Or feed them a few times before they'll let you do it. Well, he's got the red hearts. Huh. Hmm. I'm thinking either that sheep isn't fully grown and that's why we can't shear it, but it sure looks like a, a big sheep to me. Or I just happen to not feed it once compared to the other ones. And it's not friendly enough with us, and that's why we can't shear it. So we'll have to try again later, I guess. 
Or it's glitched out, I'm not sure. All right, fed the widow, good stuff. Let's grab some water. And I guess the spindles, we're gonna have to fire. It's a clay ball and a stick. You fire it in a pit kiln, and then you combine it with another stick, and that's what we use to get the wool extracted from the big ball. What's that tool called? The sickle, right? <laughs> we need a sickle for the leaves here. We don't have that made yet. Uh, we should free up some inventory space here. We're gonna plant our aspen sapling that we got last episode over there. We got an oak sapling. Get those growing. Okay, now we can make the, our spindles. Super jump! Okay, so four spindles, because I think these have a durability as well. They break pretty quickly. So we'll want to make a bunch of them at once here. Uh, throw them in here. Cool. Throw down some straw. And this will probably catch fire if we don't move it, so I should take those out. Because <laughs> it's only one block away, right? Good stuff. Okay. Lighter up. Nothing around here going to burn. Uh, actually, a lot of stuff's going to burn around here. All right, cool. So that's going to take uh, eight hours in game. Let's check out our leather now. Looks like it's done soaking. So we got a medium soak tide. Then we scrape it, I think. Or is, it, is this now when we, we put it on the log here? Okay, now we do that. Okay, so what we got to do is run our knife over top here. Oh! Oh, it resets if you do that. Interesting. Okay, our knife broke. <laughs> Uh-oh, leg spike. Let's get a, another couple knives here. I'm not drunk. I just can't draw the straight lines. Okay, here we go. Two more knives. So yeah, we got to scrape over the entire hide here. It's just like a 4x4 four four grid. You used to be able to hold right-click and it would like... Oh yeah, it still does. It would do the whole thing. Aha, uh -huh. so that's done. It's scraped. So it says medium scrape tide. Now I think we put that in the tannin and it'll be turned to leather. I think that's the final step. All right? Okay, so this is good. That used up 400 milli buckets of the lime water we got one more hide to soak here a small one and what else is it going to do oh yeah let's make our loom so we're going to need to take our our silk or whatever and turn it into a silk sheet using a loom uh we can do a bunch of different colors here i guess we got this right let's do that is that it hickory loom uh, just throw it down here, try it out. I think that'll be good to go. Okay, um, also I wanted to get maybe one more of these tool racks. Because this one's pretty much full. We're going to grab our chisel. We still haven't used this yet. Um, we're going to want to get our other fireplace situated as well and start making charcoal and stuff. So I don't remember how to use this. Right click, left click, nothing's working. Shift. No. There's a way to switch modes. Requires a hammer on the hot bar. Aha! <laughs> uh, I knew it was something like that. There we go. So you see next to the knife there, we got we have the icon. That's what mode we're in. Press P to shift. So that's like a stone brick, I think. I don't know how to actually... Okay, so this is stairs, that's slabs. This is for like individual little bits of the block. There's a couple new ones here I, I don't think I've tried before. Okay, I know what I'm doing wrong here. So if we want stairs or slabs or whatever, we can use this. It'll chisel out the shape, right? Um, we, can, we can chisel out individual blocks and stuff with this. But the thing I was really going for here, what we want is the the bricks, and you don't actually do it by like chiseling a block. Super jump! Boo! Okay, there we go. What we do is we take the chisel in our crafting screen here. You take like marble or something, and you do it like this. That makes the bricks. Totally forgot about that. And then that's how you do it. So you can make marble bricks if we get mortar. Or there's like roadblocks, there's walls, roads, uh-huh. 
So now we need to get some mortar, which I think is lime water and sand. Or we can use gypsum, right? That's like a kind of a rare metal you sometimes find. Is it a metal or is it a mineral? I'm going to say mineral. Cover, cover ground, right? Should be safe with that. <laughs> um... So we gotta get some sand. I don't think we found any sand so far, actually. Oh, it looks like everything's done. Oh, let's check our other container here. Yeah, I don't think we've come across any sand or gravel yet. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess let's uh, let's try this out because it's nighttime now. Um, so we'll grab a spindle and combine it with a stick. And then we take that and use it on the wool. So that only gives us eight pieces. Oh, and the durability is actually not bad. I thought it was like three uses and it's done. Okay, well, this is enough to make one sheet. I think it's 16 per sheet. Hopefully I don't mess this up. So you just right click it in the loom here and it kind of fills up the, the whole space. And then, okay, shift right click. Uh-huh, it kind of weaves it together. You can kind of see it progressing down as it goes. Five pixels, six pixels, seven. So I guess you got to do it 16 times. 62%, 68. Uh huh. Kind of a really cool animation on that. I like that. Oh, is it done? Yeah, okay. So we got our wool cloth. So that's one piece. We need three of those in total. Oh, hello. Hello. Just kind of waited out the night again. I see they dropped a heart. Or a quarter of a heart. So we should definitely try to grab that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've shown that yet, but some of the zombies, uh, they jump super high. So we're not entirely safe up here. Oh, I did get the kill on that. Awesome. I kind of want, like, special drops if they're going to drop here. Okay, he's down. Oh, he did drop something. We got a pipe. Quarter heart, some zombie heads, and what is this? A winter gift. Ugh, here's your present. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, don't be so enthusiastic about it, I guess. Uh, pale soup, a milky soup that bolsters resistance. Is it like a... Oh, it's a resistance three potion. Interesting. Increases arm strength for mining speed, the best a miner could eat. Oh, and we got pants. Oh man, all kinds of goodies. Some muscle. Okay, I'm going to drop this off real quick, then we're going to head out here. So our plan is, uh, we got to get some sand, we got to get some food. We're going to go over to, I think, this coast over here. Because I think at the oceans, like all along here is going to be sand or gravel. And we'll check out this building on our way too, and just see what that's about. Mm -mm. Okay, so I made my way over here. I was going to record it, but it started raining, so I, I decided to skip it. But uh, now things are, are possibly going to get nasty because it started thundering. Um, there is actually no sand along the coast here, like I thought there would be. But we can grab some gravel in the water. So I guess that's what we'll do. Just have to go along here and grab it like this. I think we can make mortar from that, right? Let's double check. I think it said sand or gravel. Sand. No, just sand. Oh, great. Okay. Where are we going to get sand from? Hmm, okay. So we're kind of trapped here. <laughs> that's, that's the building we wanted to check out. But the forest is like full of mobs now. Uh, had another idea. I think we can make a boat and, like, safely explore the, the water and maybe find some sand along the coast somewhere. So that's probably what we should do. Let's see, we have enough, right? Oh, yeah, more than enough. Yeah, this is the plan. That'll give us something to do while we wait out the storm. Um. Oh, the oil is on fire. So I think it got hit by lightning there. I thought that was going to go out, but that's going to burn forever. <laughs> uh huh. Well, like a, there goes that oil reserve. So we got a tower there with some mobs. Looks like it goes down into the ground there. 
Oh, and this is this is like a Oh, this is just like a lake. It's not the ocean. Ah, oh, maybe that's why there's no sand. Oink. Let's go check this thing out. Okay, there's lapis and something there. Wait a second. Ah, sphalerites. That's actually worth grabbing. Uh, we're really close to the water here. We might have to take off pretty quick. Oh, okay. I gotta eat something here too. Whew. We are like running low on food, actually. Uh, all we got left is this little bit of cabbage, the plums, and our wheat, and that's it. <laughs> I don't know how well you guys can see this, but there's like. It's like an angler fish, I think. He's got a sea lantern where the light's supposed to be. And he's going around, he's eating the salmon or the, the other fish in the water. Like non-stop. And there's baby ones too. I saw a baby one eating other fish too. Which is pretty neat. Oh, thank you! The rain finally stopped. We can see again. <laughs> Alright, so it's brand new day here. I just waited in the water here. Um, We got a floating cursor there okay uh, we're gonna grab this this food here I think these are tomatoes or or uh, possibly peppers but they look like they're ready yeah harvestable might be a couple mobs around so we gotta be a little bit careful here we'll, we'll grab these though these will help us out a lot noise okay stack them oh there's more over there too let's grab those get all the food we can because like, when winter comes around, if we don't have food, we're going to be in big trouble. We've got some rice here, too. Very good. Good stuff, as as you might say. Mm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to harvest them all, because I don't think I'll come back here. We'll get the seeds at the very least. Okay, should we check this out? I don't think we're going to find anything in here, but we won't know if we don't look, right? Let's, let's see what's in here. So, looks like nothing on the top floor. We went in one of these before and there was nothing. Yeah, it's just like a lookout. But it goes down to a roguelike dungeon. Come on. Come on, I want to leave. Okay, so I checked out the basement and uh, there was nothing really down there. There's the roguelike dungeon, but we're not going to go explore that. What was in his hand? That looked like a wrench or something. There's so many things in this mod pack I've never seen before. I think there's another one, but I don't hear him now. Right? Or did we kill two? I think we only killed one. Okay, let's just leave. Let's go. <laughs> so I was trying to think what we should do here, and I think we'll go explore a little bit this way. Looks like the terrain gets pretty interesting here. And while we explore, it's going to be a story time with Etho. I thought of a story to tell you guys. So today I'm going to tell you the story about how I met my arch nemesis. And you might be like, wow, Etho, you know, you seem like such a nice guy, you know, down to earth. How could you possibly have an arch nemesis, bear? But it's true, I had this arch nemesis that would not leave me alone for like three years. Three years of constant annoyment. Just could not get rid of him, and it just it drove me crazy. Um, so it all started on this really weird summer day. You might know what I'm talking about. Like you'll have so many days in a row, like maybe a month of beautiful weather, nice and calm, sunny weather, and then it starts turning fall time, and you get the low pressure, high pressure zones, and it gets windy, right? And you'll have this one windy day after all these calm days, and then suddenly out of nowhere it's like garbage moving day like all the gar all the loose garbage that's been collecting over the last month starts moving around <laughs> starts flying across the roads it gets stuck under fences on trees and it's it's this garbage day basically everything gets moved around right so it was one of those weird days where there's so much garbage flying around um and i was driving home going about 100 kilometers per hour on a highway, right? And then all of a sudden, there he was, my arch nemesis. 
Uh, by the way, uh, apparently these guys despawn, so I'm just going to kill this guy. <laughs> um, dri driving down the highway, there he was. And he was alone. He was abandoned. He was discarded like the piece of trash he was. Because quite literally, my arch nemesis was a piece of trash. It was a, it was a garbage bag, like a from a grocery store. Um, so th this this bag starts going across the road, and I, I was gonna hit it in like three seconds. So I have to decide: do I do I slow down, do I swerve, or do I just hit it and deal with the consequences? Right? I decided to hit the bag, and because I I was in the traffic, right? I didn't want to risk causing an accident or something swerving away from this thing so i hit i choose to hit the bag and i look in my rear view mirror and it didn't come come out the other end um so it got caught on my car and it's like oh no what happened to this thing is it gonna hit something hot and like melt and so i i get home and i look under my car and sure enough it's wrapped around my drive shaft like super super tightly and I didn't know this but apparently drive shafts get really hot so it was all melted too I think from the friction so the, my arch nemesis was this melted plastic bag stuck on my drive shaft and every time I would go somewhere every time I drive somewhere my drive shaft would heat up again and I when I would get out of my car it would smell like burnt plastic <laughs> Like, I tried to get as much off as I could. I, I cut as much of it off as I could. But I couldn't get it all. So for, like, three years, every time I would get out of my car, this plastic would heat up and start burning, and it would smell like burnt plastic. And, and you might think, oh, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's just a plastic bag, right? But, you know, think about it. How would you feel if every time you went to the bathroom, it stunk, right? You know, once in a while, if it happens, you know, it's understandable. It happens, right? Smelly bathrooms are natural. But if it was every time you went to the bathroom, you had to deal with a stinky bathroom, it would get to you. And that's kind of like how it was with the car. Like, every time I would go somewhere, I had to deal with that smell. <laughs> and it's not that I had to deal with it. Other people had to deal with it, too. So if I would drive someone somewhere, of course, I have to explain when I would drop them off. Like, if I dropped a friend off... It, Inevitably, every single time, they would ask, Oh, what is that smell? And then I'd have to go through the story and, and explain it again. And <laughs> it, was a, it was an annoying thing. Eventually, after three years, though, it all kind of burnt away and it didn't smell as bad. Uh-huh. Okay, this is perfect, actually. So it's just turning nighttime. Uh, it looks like there's lots of sand around here. This is sand for sure. Or I'm pretty sure. So we're going to spend... Spend the night near the water, so if mobs come out, I should be safe. And I can just dig up the sand. Okay, so I'm just going to spend the night on this island here. Should be fairly safe. There was a a fruit tree over there. I thought I was recording when I when I got these saplings, but I wasn't. We got three apple saplings, and I see there's another one over there. So we might go get that in the morning. But yeah, I'm going to start digging up some sand here. I don't think I've shown this either, but... A in uh, Terra Firma Craft, you can actually eat seaweed, too. I think you just have to gather it with a knife. Like that. And it's, it's a vegetable. <laughs> so, easy food. Probably not the best food, but we can eat it. So I'm going to gather all the seaweed I can here. There's another tree there, too. Okay, so we're going to try to get both of those. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, we just gotta avoid the zombies. And also we need a refill on water. You know, I think it was only a, like a couple weeks later that something else happened in my car too. <laughs> something something from above. Um I was stopped at a light for like a minute, you know, and nothing nothing was really happening. It was very calm and peaceful. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom! Like the boats do that when I hop out for some reason. This is super loud noise, loud enough to make me jump. And I watched in horror as I thought someone th like hurled a water balloon at my windshield. Like this giant splash hit my windshield. 
And then I looked at it a little more closely and I realized it wasn't a water balloon. It was bird poop. <laughs> um, this is like such a weird thing. You know, like bird poop, it's like an inch by an inch white patch, right? That's not what this was. This was um, like a foot and a half by a foot and a half. Like, <laughs> I am convinced to this day that it was like an albatross or something. I looked up. I didn't see any birds. I didn't see any planes. Possibly it like came from a bathroom, like from a plane or something, and they they uh, ejected it and it hit my car just by chance. I don't know what it was. But I'm I'm pretty sure it was a bird because uh, it was like clear with lots of brown particles mixed in and a little bit of green um yeah <laughs> and it splashed like all over the place like it was all over the hood of my car all the way to the back of the car it was like everywhere uh it was pretty traumatic yeah it's one of those mysteries i'm never gonna be able to fully explain um <laughs> Like, the biggest bird where I live is a Canadian goose, I'm pretty sure. Or, or it's one of the biggest, right? And I've seen Canadian goose poop. And this was way bigger. So I'm pretty convinced it was an albatross or some other migrating bird that's huge, right? But I don't know for sure. I'm never going to be able to, to get an answer. It did take up, like, the full height of the windshield, though. Like, no joke. Solid... Solid splash that size. Not counting all the droplets that splashed off. So, it was a big one. And it was loud. And it was scary. And I had to clean it up. Anyways, the moral of the stories, guys, is uh, number one, don't litter, please. It might seem like a small thing just throwing a plastic bag in the ditch, but uh, it can have some serious consequences. And number two... If a bird poops on your car, you know, you might be really upset, you might be really frustrated, but just think of, of my story. It can get a lot worse, trust me. Uh-huh. We're gonna we're gonna head back now. Are you fully grown? Can I eat you? There's a lot of them here. I think we're gonna be good on food for a while. If I can catch this guy. Come on. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Oh, another present! Oh, leg spike. <laughs> Good tidings I bring for me. What? <laughs> okay. So these are troll things, too. Oh, I thought that was a wither at first. That freaked me out. I, was, I thought that was series over. Oh! Oh, no, 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 I forgot about the bear. I think we can outrun them. They are very fast, though. Is he gone? I think he's gone. Okay. Oh! Yeah, we're going back home. Look at that. Wow. So as, as soon as it stopped raining, it like spread like crazy. And it made it to the island, even. The stuff's burning there. Wow. Oh, not that way. Mm mm. Mm mm. <laughs> okay, we got a few guys here. Should be okay. Oh, plant that down. Uh, how's our home? Is it safe? I can't tell. Usually we're there by nighttime, so nothing spawns. <gasps> oh, that guy almost grabbed us. Can he get up here? Oh, it's just a spider. I thought it was one of those beetles that picks you up. Whew. Okay, that scared me. We're all good. Everything's good. A lot of the torches went out. All right. Oh, it's a, tr a mountain troll. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a rough night. Oh, that's bad timing. Run, 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 run. 
All right, good stuff. So we had a good adventure there. We got some food. We got our sand. We survived the night here. Uh, a couple things before we wrap up, though. I messed this up. <laughs> There's one more step. You got you got to soak it in fresh water, and then it turns into leather. Uh huh. We have no fresh water up here, so I'm not going to do that today. Um, also, I wanted to check out the sheep again. See if we can shear that one that that wouldn't let us shear it before. So we're, we'll head over to the hill here again, and then we will probably wrap up for today. Uh, also, we got to feed them again. Oh, oh, stuff still hasn't despawned. Oh yeah, they moved down here more so actually. They kind of went down the hill and then they couldn't get back up. Okay. And it looks like they re-drew their wool already. That's cool. So we might be able to do the bed next episode. Feed him. And her. And that one up there, too. Won't let me do it. You are a stubborn one. Okay. Grab our knife. Yeah, still can't shear that one for some reason. But these two is still okay. That is weird. Just try one more time. I don't... Well, maybe you guys will tell me. You probably will. Oh, but I'm not sure why we can't cheer this one. Because it has the hearts, like the other ones. So it, it must just be too small or something. Uh-huh. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.